Welcome to the tutorial video on JavaScript and Ink. In this video, I'm going to talk about Ink for Web. When you're using the Inky editor, there's an option within the file menu to publish for Ink for Web. This produces a JavaScript and HTML collection that runs your Ink story in a web browser. What it produces, though, is an HTML file and three JavaScript files, along with a singular CSS file. I've loaded all of that in a repo here so we can talk through what it does and start to think through ways of using JavaScript with ink. I want to start though with the ink story I've written. It's not terribly exciting. It literally says right here, this is an example story. And you see that right over here, example story.ink. This is an ink story produced from this text. Now I run it through the inky editor and produce the ink for web version. I've taken those files and put them in this so we can look at them all together. The first of which is the index.html file. As you notice, it's fairly straightforward. It has the exact same title, it includes a style sheet, and includes some of the information we see over here on the right hand side. Written for ink is this link right here. I see a container, a header, header one, example story right here. We see on line 20, byline, I didn't include that information as well as three JavaScript files down here at the bottom. The first of which is ink.js. We can jump over to that, but right now it's not worth looking at. It's, it, but it is though the ink runtime for an ink file that has been compiled using the ink engine. What this basically means is we can use ink in a JavaScript by using this runtime and including it along with different functions we can call. So coming back over the HTML file, we see we have that runtime. It's the very first thing included. The next thing included is the example story.js. What this is, even though it looks a little bit weird here, is a variable story content and then JSON content around that, set to the content of that variable. When you're using the making a story.js file from that same file menu within Inky, you are creating this file. It's basically taking the JSON content that would have been the compiled content of an ink story and setting it to the value of a variable. This allows us to more easily use it within a JavaScript environment. So coming back to HTML, we have our HTML file, we have our runtime, we have our story, then we have an extra file here, main.js. This is this last file here included on line 28. This is actually a collection of commands that uses the JavaScript API for ink to do different things. And I'm gonna talk through bits of it and then later within this expanded series, we'll see examples of how to use that API for your own purposes. But for now, let's just glance at it and then I'll talk through a couple of things. So we'll see the very first thing it does is include that story content pulled from example story into an ink.js.story object. So it's creating a new object based on that content of that variable, that JSON, and making a new story object out of that. From there, it's doing some things with global tags. I'm going to skip through. There are no tags as part of the story. And scroll down into the continue story function. In fact, I'm going to scroll down to about line 46. That's the start of how it's using the API. Now, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the API in this video, but I want people to be aware in watching this that if you use the ink for wet option, you're using the JavaScript API. And you can write your own version of working with this using the same API functionality. Being aware that this is actually a really great example of how to use it to create something similar for your own projects. So again, I'll talk through a little bit of this and then we'll wrap up this video and in the expanded series of this, an expanded video series, we'll see more examples of using this API. So the first of which is can continue. This checks to see if there's more text. Has the story ended yet or not? Then right here on line 49 is story.continue. This is the main thing we're going to be talking a lot about in this video series. This grabs the next section of the story. It grabs the next text, loads the next options, but if you can continue, you call continue. So if there's remaining part of the story, it calls continue and it gets the next text, loads the next option, and does everything else. Think of it as sort of the next tick in the story or the next thing to do. We're going to be checking can we continue, then we'll be calling continue. 
And in this example, it does a whole lot of other things where it's treating tags in different ways and doing anything, everything else. But we're gonna scroll down a bit because we don't care a whole lot about tags at this moment. Scroll down some more. And we'll look a little bit right here. This is the other thing I wanted to touch on. So I mentioned continue loads the next chunk of the story, the next text, the next choices. If there are choices, they will be within current choices. Notice right here it's using a for each within JavaScript and calling a function on top of that to, for each choice, create links, which we, see, we would see over here if there were any choices in this. There aren't. There's just this simple text. But within each of this, it's creating a paragraph, it's doing some other things, it's doing a show delay. But in the basic idea here is that if there would be choices, they would be in this during, they would be in story.current choices. If there's any more text, it will be loaded within continue. We check to see if we continue. We continue down here at the bottom of this. We check story.current choices, do something with those choices. In this case, add them to the HTML and then move on. So we see here it's got the slow delay, scroll down. There's a lot of extra stuff in this. Remove all, set visible, set split property tag. So within this main.js file, it's doing a whole lot of extra stuff we don't necessarily need. But the three parts of that API we're gonna to return to in later videos. Can continue, we need to know if we can continue through the story. The continue function, load the next part of it, whatever the next text is, what the next choices are, and story that current choices contain the current choices for that story. So as a, as a review, when we use the Inky editor and we choose within the file menu, file menu ink for web, we're creating an HTML file, three JavaScript files, and a CSS file. We didn't look at the CSS file, but those contain extra rules about how to change the visual layout of things. And we can, of course, tweak those options for our own stories. But at least according, at least for this series, we want to start to think about ways we can work with JavaScript, knowing from this example that the JavaScript API is out there and we can load the runtime ink.js. And in the main.js file, we started to see some of the functions we can work with to build our own ink projects that use JavaScript in new and interesting ways. Thanks for watching.